Welcome to Shorty Supercoach and welcome to another player profile. Sorry about the absence of late. I have been back this week, but you have probably seen a bit of an absence in my videos of late, and that's just because the laptop did die, um, and that had you know everything that I sort of used to put it all together in terms of uh, getting the content out there. So I was uh, yeah, missing in action there for a little bit. So apologies about that, but. Um, yeah, thanks for those who did subscribe to the channel, even without anything sort of coming out recently. And for those that I know will be tuning in now and, and sticking around for the long haul, um, it was a bit annoying. You know, obviously, probably a couple of weeks there where I couldn't get much out. Um, by the time I got around to getting a new one and installing and blah, 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 all the stuff you've got to do and, and working and that just made it a bit tricky. But um, Anyway, we're back now, and I'm looking forward to, yeah, really getting stuck into it and pumping out plenty of content, and a mate of mine uh, requested this one, part of the Supercoach HQ team, um, Josh there, so thanks for that one, mate. Callum Mills, I wanted to discuss, um, I had a look at Wingard the other day, and, and this fella, you know, trends across a similar line, you know, different, but, you know, certainly a, a young prodigy that a lot of people had massive hopes for his career is you know definitely in the earlier stages than Wingard but probably has equal amount of promise in terms of the 2019 season and similarly priced 50 or 60k between them and one's a defender one's a forward but I think Mills is certainly a guy that you're looking at saying gee this could pay off big time I could get a premium well under the odds here or it could be that age-old mistake where we try to predict that old breakout contender and it just doesn't happen because we know Mills is going to be a star at some point there's no doubt about it um, you know, he's going to average big numbers at some point in his, his career but is that going to be 2019 that's all we really care about at the minute so in terms of the discussion in terms of the numbers last year you really can't look too much at the numbers because he broke his foot I think playing NFL with his mates, I think just throwing a pill around um, American football style, so sort of unique way to rule yourself out of the season, but it nonetheless was his highest averaging season, 79, off the back of a 73.3 in 2017, and 77.2 in 2016, and a lot of talk when he first came onto the scene about how he was a cool and composed, great in traffic and around the stoppages midfield type. But given the Swans' strong midfield, he found himself across the half-back line, intercepting and really looking far beyond his years, you know, in terms of leadership and directing the team and the way he was able to sort of control the field at times for such a young man. He's only played 55 games, and he'll be about 22 when the season does start. So last year, for what it's worth, just the one ton, I think there was only nine games he played, that was 105, and a low score of 40 in round two. But the big difference is, you know, some players, you look back on their stats to get a bit of an idea of the patterns and what we can expect. But this will be a new chapter for Mills because it looks all but certain that he's going to find himself much more predominantly through the midfield. So while his stats of the mid to high 70s in terms of the last three years look promising, you almost can't look at him at all because they'll be in a completely different role. He sort of plied his trade in the half-back line and it looks almost certain that he will explode through the middle. Um, he's priced at 428000 so very, very, not cheap, but for a guy with this potential and, and we'd probably bracket him in that sort of premium range, you know, he's certainly as cheap as a premium type can get. Um, there was a match simulation the other day at the Swans. He lined up at the first centre bounce, looked very good by all reports, played through the middle. And we know that Swans midfield is getting older. Hannabury's left the club. You know, guys like Kennedy are, are getting on in their years. And, and I think Heaney and Mills are the sort of guys that are going to be the next generation for the Swans. And I think they're definitely players we have to consider. Um... My only concern with the selection is the fact that the old breakout contender can be so tedious and so tough. You know, we've seen players that just look 
odds on to break out. You go, you know, like they're into their fourth year. You know, I probably thought he'd break out last year, to be honest. But now, you know, they're almost certain. You know, Christian Petrarca, I use as an example, you know. There's guys over the years that you go, oh, definitely this year. I mean, worst case scenario, he averages 90, you know, and then things just go wrong. Sometimes we look at stats and how things should go and what we expect, but somehow they can still go pear-shaped. So a word of warning, obviously, in terms of where things can go wrong with the breakout. But I think they're worthwhile going one or two across your whole field. So, you know, don't go crazy with them. But if you've only got Mills and maybe one other, then, then that's fair enough. I really like Mills as a proposition. Very talented player. Has always looked far more experienced than you know, what he actually has played and his age. So I think he's a guy that will definitely take the next step. How big a step is that? That's the big question. You know, coming back from this sort of an injury too, how will that affect him? Um, the match simulation seemingly not too bad, not too bad at all. Um, so I must say right at the minute, he's not in my team. Um, I will do a team video pretty soon. Um, and the reason is, I touched on in the wing guard video that the forward line is proving difficult to bank on anyone. You know, aside from Dangerfield and Heaney, I can't have too much assurity that there'll be a top six to eight player in that line. Where the back line is a bit different, and it's a bit different from other years because often there's a lot of uncertainty with the back line, but I see quite a lot of certainty there, you know. I think Lloyd's a bit expensive, but he's very reliable. We've got Laird. I think Sicily showed that he is the real deal. I think we've got Whitfield in there. You know, Zach Williams, very reliable sort of guy. I mean, Cade Simpson will surely just keep on keeping on now that Doherty isn't there. Um, I'm sure there's a few others that, that I haven't mentioned. But there's actually quite a few guys that I think and look at and say, no, they're definitely going to be there. They're definitely going to be there. And I think probably the question, you know, I pumped Alex Witherden's tyres right up. He's in my side at the moment. He's about 20 or 30k more expensive. And I've also got Williams, who's about 20k less expensive than Mills. So you're probably going to go two out of those three, or at least I'm probably going to go two out of those three. And, and Witherden's been quite popular. Williams is a lock in my book, unless something happens through pre-season. He's shown that he's an exciting player to rebound out of that GWS back line. So I think he's a must. Um, but it's hard to argue Mills and what we expect him to do. You know, he's he's been long touted as a superstar, and it's hard to argue. It looks like he's hit the ground running in the preseason. He's well-priced. He's got a reasonable amount of games under his belt now. He's in that range where it is absolute breakout contender territory. So it's hard to argue. So if he's in your side, I don't blame you. Um, he's certainly in the mix for me, but I would like to just see a little bit of encouragement through the preseason and just really get a good glimpse of him with my own eyes and, and see how he's looking because I think he's the sort of guy that might be able to save you, you know, 80 to 100k in terms of um, going down from a premium to him, but he might be able to produce the same numbers. So I think whenever you can get a guy under 450 that could average high 90s, certainly worth considering. So. Um, yeah, give me your thoughts on Mills and whether he's in your side or not. Let me know what you think and um, certainly flick us a comment in terms of any players you would like me to profile because I do want to get through a few of those and, and do a bit of position stuff too. So if you've got anyone in mind, certainly comment away and um, I'll uh, certainly read through those and, and hopefully get to yours at some point time permitting but um yeah good to be back i'll certainly um check in soon and have a video coming out soon so be sure to check into that and i'll uh, i'll be in touch cheers